Hello and welcome to Fantasy Grounds uh, web recordings. My name is Doug Davison. I'm one of the owners of Fantasy Grounds and Smiteworks. And so today I'm going to show you how you can use the core RPG rule set to make a generic character sheet for a game system that may not have a, a rule set to support it. And so uh, the main takeaway that we want you to have today is that while it may not, may not have the same level of uh, automation that you might have with a full featured rule set, especially with the commercial rule set that comes with all, a lot of the built-in content, you can get up and running very quickly uh, for almost any sort of game system because Fantasy Grounds will allow you to create uh, places to store the values that you would typically need for a character. So I've already opened the uh, core RPG rule set, and this is what you get. It looks like a, a basic um, you know, blank interface, and then you want to go into your characters section, and you just want to create a new character. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a brand new character, and uh, you'll see that it comes up with a blank sheet, and it has some sections for putting your attributes and skills, uh, recording abilities, your inventory, and making some notes. So this doesn't look very helpful, but I'm going to fast forward and show you just real quick. Uh, this is an example of a character that I made for All Flesh Must Be Eaten, and this template could then be saved off and you could just customize it or let your players customize it and, and change their own skill set um, you know, down the road by, by modifying some values. So to show you what this would look like, you could just create your character, call it Bob, and then under the attributes and skills, this list editing tool, uh, you click on that to edit the list, then you click again to add sections. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you what you would do to add attributes. So you just put in attributes, and then here you'll have another list editing tool you can quickly add. Okay, I'm going to need strength, dexterity, perception, and con. And then basically you just kind of um, put these in here. So you type it in, you get your strength, dexterity, constitution, perception, and willpower. And you'll see that once I've done that, I can get out of list editing mode. And now I have a, an area where I can store that value for my character sheet. And in All Flesh Must Be Eaten, you typically have a value from 1 to 5 to indicate how strong you might be in something. And so you could just put in what those different modifiers are. Maybe they've got a, uh, maybe they're really strong, but they have a relatively weak willpower. Then what this would allow you to do is this would be the modifier to the roll. And All Flesh Must Be Eaten, they have a, a 1d10 plus the modifier. And then if it's an easy check, then they add that twice. So for instance, you could say, okay, well, I have my perception. You would just double click it, and you'll see that in the bottom left corner under the modifiers, it now says I've got my perception loaded. And then when I roll my d10, it'll say that I rolled my perception and I added 2 to the value, which is what my bonus was. Uh, so that's one way you can do it. If you wanted to have something where maybe you had double the perception, you could just double click it uh, twice and you'll see that it, it increased the modifier to plus four. Now when I roll my d10, it adds the plus four and shows that I've added my perception twice. That would be for an easy test. The other things that you might do if I look here at this character sheet is um, I might put in the secondary attributes just to, again to record information. So here you could say, okay, well, that's my main attributes. My secondary attributes are going to be derived. And you would build that just like you would with a regular character sheet. And that would be driven based off of these other values. For now, I'm just going to plug in, uh, make a few blanks here. I'm going to put in um, endurance points. You can abbreviate if you want. And you could also put like, okay, well, I have a max of 29 and then here what you'd really probably want to record is just what your current value is that way if this takes damage at any point then you would just say okay well now i'm down to a 21 and you just got a note to tell you what the the max is do the same thing for your essence your speed and your lps if you have too many you want to remove it just click the little minus button that will delete it out and then you just fill this out um, just like you would a character sheet. And let's see, speed would be 10. Okay, so it's real easy to add a secondary section. Skills are going to be one that we're going to use a lot. And there's a couple ways you could do this. The way that I chose to do it, um, I'll demonstrate that in a minute. But you could start off just by putting, I'm just going to put a handful here just so you, you get the idea. But let's say you have um, the dodge ability, and you could put a note to say that uses dex if you wanted. 
and then you could say I've got um, maybe guns and that's with my pistol and that uses dex and let's see how about computers that's probably enough to, to demonstrate here uh, and then let's say computers will use um, I don't know if I have that in there. I don't know what the computers use actually. We'll say willpower for now. I don't think that's actually it. <clears throat> but then you would just put in your modifiers. I'm just going to get rid of a few of these here. And then um, let's make that uh, two, a three, and a one. Okay. So when you get out of editing mode, what you could do in this case, all flesh must be eaten, uses a combination of your skill benefit and then your attribute. You use uh, both of those. So what you could do is you could say, okay, well, I'm going to do a dodge check. So I'm going to add that in to my modifiers, and now I'm going to use my dex. So that combination gives me a total of a plus five. Now when I roll my dice, you'll see in the background here, it's going to show me dodge dex plus three, uh, and then my dexterity modifier of a plus two. Here's your total value. Anything uh, nine or greater is going to be success, and then there's different levels depending on how uh, much you exceeded that. Uh, or if you roll like a natural 1 or a uh, natural 10, then obviously it has some other effects in this particular game system. Uh, but one of the things you could do, so instead of just having these two modifiers, you could also uh, build out what your final values are and then maybe record in the description what your bonus is. So that, that way you've got a single click that you, would, that you would roll. If you wanted to link a die roll to this, um, in this case these are all going to be D10s, I'm just going to drag it over to that skill and drop it. And you'll see what happens here is now that I've got those in there, if I want to roll this check, I double click on that or I double click on the dice and it's going to roll that and add the modifier. So here again, I can pick it up and roll it as well and it'll show that value. If I want to first load in my attribute bonus, then I could say, okay, well, I've got dex. Let's load, load that plus two in and now I want to roll my dodge roll. So it's a two-step process now, but it's, it's relatively simple and it's easy to adjust whether or not you you have that benefit. So uh, to fast forward, if I flip back over to the character that I already built out, you'll see that that's exactly what I did going down the list here for all the skills. So they've got all the skills with the bonuses built in. Any of these, like if they're playing sport uh, baseball, I could load in my decks and then just um, you know roll my ability. In that case, I rolled a one, so I would roll a d6 <clears throat> and then subtract that value from here. Uh, okay, so that's um, just real how easy it is to kind of manage all of these abilities. And then you can put anything you want here. So here I've also got my damage and my weapons here. And so I've got it listed that my bat does D8 times my character's strength. In this case, the strength is a 3, so it's going to be 3D8 damage. And uh, I did that the same way. So what I did is I just, uh, actually I want to add a second one. We'll call it a, a wooden bat, for instance. So if I get a new weapon... I'll just come through here, I'll add a new one and call it a, um, or a metal bat, how about that? So let's say a metal bat is going to do, let's say for instance this one does um, an extra plus two damage or so. Um, so here you could say d8 times strength plus two, for instance. So here I add my plus two fixed bonus and then I want to just drag dice here. So again I can close that out and grab three of these. I'm going to hold down the, the left mouse button and then just right click a couple times and drop it into there. And alternately what you could do is let's right click and clear that dice bucket out. You could just drag dice individually. So let's say it's a D8 and a D6 and a D4. You could build a dice bucket that you then refer back to. This is really nice if you happen to have an ability that you use a lot where you're basically adding in maybe a weapon damage and then you've got some extra bonus like maybe you add an extra d6 damage because you have uh, a sneak attack ability or something. You can kind of load all those in. But now if I roll this, whenever I need that value, I've rolled that value added in my bonuses. And it makes it real easy to kind of play just like you would around the table, but it helps kind of keep track of everything in a nice, easy easy fashion and it does the math for you as well. One other thing you can do is look in the game system that you're going to play and build up some uh, some modifiers. So if I go to my plus minus window here, 
one thing that's very common in, in all flesh must be eaten and in a lot of game systems is maybe you've got different modifiers to hit based off of the range. So here I could say, okay, well, if I'm shooting at point blank, I'm going to get a plus one on my attack roll. Again, load that in. Then I'm going to add my dexterity. Then I'm going to do my uh, gun attack. And then when I roll that, it'll show where all the values came from. So I'd add my dex and my point blank bonus, and it got me a 10, which is a success. And then I could then go over to my damage for my rifle and roll that. Once you've got a basic character sheet up and running, if you don't want your characters or your players to have to go through this whole process and build it all out again, or you want to provide a good example that they could then refer to, it's really easy for a player to see this and then with some really brief instruction to say, okay, we'll just remove the sections, the skills that you don't need, and then use the plus button to add skills that may be not listed on your, on your character sheet that you, that you have as a character. Uh, so what you could do go into your character section here and then you see this little list in editing button click on that and then you'll see there's a new icon that shows up called export character so if I hit export character here what I'm gonna do is is just type in uh, all flesh must be eaten save it as a template I'll replace the value and then the nice thing is um, you can import that so here again when I'm in list edit mode I can import a new character and I could say I want to do this one maybe I've got a few players so let's go ahead and just import that same one a few times so I've got a couple of them and now I can make okay this is this is going to be Sarah and let's give her a token or a portrait and then I've got uh, maybe you don't want the token to be assigned when you when you first do that but uh, let's make this one John and then I've got uh, let's see maybe Connie and then all they have to do is go through here and, and change their individual values and they're good to go now one thing you might do if I want these to sort they'll sort by name so I, I put in one more thing in this particular example to show uh, if you want to do an attribute test but you wanted to um, just make make an explanation of what those are. A difficult test that doesn't use a skill in this particular game system just uses a strength, uh, or a straight attribute bonus. So that would be my dexterity and I say I want to do a difficult test. Then it says I'm running a difficult test using my dexterity. If it's a simple test I would do the same thing but I want to add my attribute twice. So I add it once and then twice and now I do a simple test and you're off and running. But what I'm going to do now that I've got this in place is these files uh, that I exported out so again you click on uh, this button here that creates an XML file if you upload that up to the Fancy Ground site that's something that you could freely share with other people since game system mechanics as long as you don't have any copywritten text in there, the mechanics of a game system are not uh, something that could be copywritten. So you can freely share those sorts of things. Like I could share this uh, All Flesh Must Be Eaten sample character as long as it doesn't have uh, anything proprietary like the name or, or any text that they maybe have type in, uh, typed up a, a personality or description. Then I can share that on the forums and then other users might be able to get up and running a lot faster with All Flesh Must Be Eaten. There's a lot of different game systems out there and there could be different ways that excuse me, that you decide to make a character or a character sheet. So feel free to, to look this over, to come up with different uh, alternative takes on what information is important for that game system for you to help run that game as smoothly as possible and without having to do any programming or coding or anything. So thanks again. I appreciate your time, and I hope to, uh, to see you guys using that feature and getting a lot more gameplays in. Thank you very much.